you are definitely going to want to see at the absolute best Breeders' Cup seminar in the game, bar none. We are going to try and come out of the gate running, but more importantly, finish like the fastest car in the race. things work out, we'll be shopping for Cartier Diamonds. Nobody does it better. Well, hello everyone. We're here for another weekend, and this time we're here in my home state, Kentucky. We're going to be at Keeneland. Yep, it's opening weekend at Keeneland uh, for their fall meet. Uh, we're going to talk about last week, four out of five on our pick five. Uh, but uh, we've had some winners here and there, and that paid pretty decent a couple of places. And um, and uh, we're going to try it again at, uh, at Keeneland. We're going to do all stakes pick five there, which is going to be tough. Let me tell you, it's going to be tough there. Uh, before I get started, I want to thank Race Lens. And if you guys have any questions out there about trainers, being an owner, claiming horses, or even just going out and buying them at the sale. I can help you with that, show you how it's done, uh, send all your questions, and I will get back to you and answer them. And remember, to subscribe, hit that subscribe button, and there's a little bell there. You'll get all the alerts. You'll get every show. And uh, we'll get started here at Keeneland. So the first one we're going to do is going to be race number nine. We're going to do race nine and ten at Kingland. So we're going to start with race nine. This is for juveniles. It's the for two-year-olds going a mile on the 16th. Basically, your prop, probably your top four finishers here. You most likely will see in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. So we're going to start with the number one horse. This horse has been the talk for a while. But last time out, got bumped, had a couple of things happen to him. Um, he had all the bad luck in the world, and he still finished second. Is this horse going to be a monster? Maybe so. Um, you know, this horse has everything I saw. You, if you look, go back on tape and watch this horse, horse has a lot, a lot of talent. Um, they're expecting this horse early pace is a 95 rating. Middle pace is a 90 a 93 of a late pace for two-year-old. Uh, that's pretty doggone good. Let's see what kind of notes they have on race lens. Beaten favorite, jockey switch. That is going to be a success ROI uh, of 21%. Now, you're thinking jockey switch. You're going Irad. I mean, yeah, Irad going to Luis Saez. Luis Saez is no slouch. He knows what to do. He knows how to get those winners across the, the wire. He's a very strong rider, um, sometimes maybe overlooked sometimes. Uh, excellent. This horse has got the speed to sit right there, second or third, to make its pounce. Is this a major player? Yes, major, major player for the win column. Definitely have to keep your eyes on that horse. Eight to five, I probably would accept maybe one notch below that, uh, but other than that, there's a couple other horses in here that could really do some damage. So just don't quite just give it all up for that uh, that horse. And this jockey is uh, ridden for this trainer uh, two times. And look at this ROI, plus 155 ROI, return on your investment. you got to love that. That's excellent. We're going to go now to the number two horse. This horse is another one, but this one's a closer. Uh, he's going to have to uh, pick it up a little bit for me. Um, I don't think this horse has got the talent as at least six or seven other horses in here. Uh, this horse really has to pick it up. I am really concerned. I think he's going to be left behind too far back in the beginning. He just broke his maiden. And uh, yes, he closed. He did everything right. Yes. But I'm going to have to see a lot more from this horse, especially going against the one. And remember, I just finished telling you, there is at least another four or five horses that could probably compete against that one any day of the week, okay? 
And look at the, how the early pace they're saying ratings here, 76, 66, 67. Really going to have to pick it up to keep up, with especially the one. The three. This horse, uh, last time out, went wire to wire. Uh, the two times before that, kind of strange. They were on turf. He went from dirt to turf. Turf didn't do much, and then he opened, and then his eyes wide open and won at Churchill Downs. He ran at Kentucky uh, Downs on that uh, September the 5th. And, yeah, it looks like, and, you know, he ran even. And let me tell you something. Horses that win there or finish a very strong, close race there usually don't do good the very next time out. This horse was finishing fourth. He was tiring. Probably got a good little workout because that tracks uphill, downhill, right, left turn, you name it. Uh, this horse would probably close a little bit better today. I don't know if he'll go out in front. Uh, look at his early pace, 85, 80, and then a 106 at the end. So this horse, could, if they could save a little energy, this horse could give a, a nice kick at the end. Is this horse a top player? I don't think so. I think, if anything, bottom of the exotics. But for me, I am personally going to pass on this horse, even though I do like uh, – Keith DeSormo as the trainer. He's from California. I do like him, but um, I don't see this horse competing against a couple others in here. The four. Broke its maiden. Did it with style. Mile and 16 with Hernandez. The main jockey for Kenneth McPeak. Uh, this horse did everything right. Uh, looks like it was close and very good. He stayed very close to the pace. I think this is more of your mid-pace come from behind her. Uh, look at this 10 to 1. I like those odds. Is this a, a tender for the win spot? Yeah, probably so. It's probably a contender for that win spot. This horse has definitely got talent. Do not look away from this horse, especially at 10 to 1 or better. you got early pace here is 81. Middle pace is 78. And the final pace of 94 rating. Not too bad. Horses. Definitely got something there. So I would make it a major player. Another horse here, uh, that one wire to wire, Maiden, stretching out. I do like horses that go from six furlongs to a mile 16th. I do like that, especially if they won wire to wire. Now, it depends who the trainer is. Can they have them conditioned enough to go that far? Uh, Brendan Walsh, he's definitely that type of trainer that could get them there. Um, he, his sire and his damn sire out of Ghost Sapper definitely tells you that this horse could get there. Early pace, 79, 80 in the middle, late of a 104. So this horse could, if it could relax a little bit, uh, could be very dangerous. Will this be your leader is the main question. I don't know. I, I, I think it can be. It could be your leader. It looked like this horse handled the lead very easy, pulled away with ease. So, and Tyler Gaffleone's aboard, three to one. This might be your leader. Is this a major player for the win spot? I'm personally going to say no for the win spot, but definitely for the exactus. Put that horse in the, the second slot for, and then trifectas for the third spot. I think this horse can hang around and take a piece of the pie. And what's the angle here? Oh, horse won last time out as a favorite. Yep, one is a... Even money favorite. Okay. So there's your angle. The six. Uh, last time out, broke its maiden. Time before that, ran out uh, back and forth, you know, carried in early speed, stayed five wide. I saw the race that, that the horse won. He won it with pretty e with ease. You know, I'm going to tell you that right now at Saratoga. Uh, this horse has got tons of talent. This horse is going to be flying at the end. Uh, I, this horse is more mid pack or late closer. You got Johnny Velasquez up 12 to 1 player, yes, but more for the place and show spot, if anything. Uh, definitely on the bottom part of your exotics. So I would not totally toss this horse 100%. You got an 84 early pace, uh, 76 uh, middle pace, and a late pace of 97. So Definitely a player. The seven. Uh, last time out in a graded stakes, pretty much ran even. Seventh with three lengths, seventh four lengths, fifth by five lengths, 
fourth by seven lengths. Didn't show much. Time before that did good when it broke its maiden six furlongs. For me, this horse is going to have to wake up a little bit more. Uh, can it be a player? It could if it woke up a little bit. Uh, for me, I'm going to sit back and watch. Uh, look, the second start after a layoff out of the money. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's not a good sign. It's going reverse. He should. I mean, if we should have seen something positive, I'm not saying he had to win that graded uh, three race. No, I'm saying you got to see something positive. But the horse was just sitting there like he's its first time running, trying to figure things out, and that could have been part of it. It could have been. So, but for me, I'm going to sit back and uh, watch this one. The eight late closing sprinter. Tells you usually they want longer. Does this horse want longer? I don't know. Um, I think this horse is going to have to pick it up a little bit. This horse will be sitting pretty close to the pace. 74, 77, and a 97. I still think this horse needs to pick it up a lot more to compete against a couple of the horses that I'm telling you about. There's at least three horses I would put in the win column that has a chance at win and a couple that have – a chance at the place part money. And right now I don't think this horse could beat any one of those five or six. The nine horses. Uh, last two times have been doing some damage, picking up checks, really nice checks, broke its maiden, almost wire to wire set really close to the pace. And when he ran in a grade three, look at that. I mean, he hung in there. Now this is what I mean. Show me something positive. Doesn't have to win a great stakes because it just got out of maiden. But show me something positive. This is a positive race. This horse ran on the turf. Does this horse like the turf? Well, apparently it kind of does. Out of not this time, out of a curling mare, but it should run up fine on the dirt. Um, is this a horse a major player? I don't know about a major, but I still think this horse has got some growing to do. This horse uh, got beat by Zulu Kingdom, which did come back and win last week. If you're paying attention to my show, I had that horse as my my big single. That horse won with ease uh, this past week. And anyway, this horse will definitely be a player. Don't quite turn your head on this horse. Eight to one. Trainer Todd Pletcher last race. Beaten as a favorite. He comes back with a success score of 7.17. Uh, Beaten favorite with switch jockey switch. You're going Ortiz to uh, Florent. Not a, that's okay. Florent's fine. He does a great job. Uh, Todd Pletcher, you know, what else can we say? So a player, yes. Uh, you know, it's one of those, do I throw him in some exotics? I would say throw him in some exotics, baby. But don't get super crazy about this horse. It's another one that's going to be real close to the pace. You got a lot of pace horses in here. And I would just, you know, not go super crazy. But definitely has talent. The 10. Um, this horse. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. This horse here, um, last time out, did everything it was supposed to do. Six furlongs the first time out right down here. Ran like this horse. He ran like he wanted more distance. So Dallas Stewart gave him more distance, gave him seven furlongs, and boom, he wins. Same jock, Santana. He's an excellent rider. Over, over, uh, he's overlooked. Okay. He's definitely underrated. Uh, this horse will be sitting there pretty close to the pace. I just don't know if it has enough oomph to do it. I'm going to sit back and watch it. But right here, their projected early pace is 80, 78, and 89. But I do like what I see. I think this horse might be more of a miler, especially with that breeding Malibu Moon out of an old-fashioned old mare. I'm, you know. So I, I'm going to say, for me, look for this horse at a mile. Might do some damage. The eleven. Horse uh, won his first time out on turf. I don't blame Ignacio, great trainer, by the way, put him out on turf first time because you got more than ready out of a war front mare that screams, just screams turf, but here we are in the dirt. 
Well, they win their fair share of dirt too, more than Reddy's and Warfront. Yeah, they definitely do. And uh, last time out was on turf. Finished an okay, I mean, a pretty even race third on the turf at Kentucky Downs. Remember what I said at Kentucky Downs? If you run a very hard race and you finish, let's just say within a length or less, and even if you're a fourth or first, length or less, it's tough for you to win next time out. Here you're going from turf to dirt. Okay. This trainer doesn't have a great win percentage from turf to dirt, but in the money, 73% of the time. That's pretty impressive from turf to dirt. Uh, this trainer gets 26, I mean, 16% in stakes races. Okay. So I definitely think this is a major player. Uh, you have Jose Ortiz. Could have probably ridden a couple of other horses that his brother rode that we've been talking about in this race. And Jose chooses this horse. He rode this horse. You got a 30 to 1 shot here. Probably one of my long shots of the day to watch out for. I'm not flat out saying he's going to win. No, 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 no. Has a heck of a shot of winning. One of the major players are winning. Put this horse win a place. Put him some in exotics, uh, exactus, trifectas, you know, do all that. Maybe you put him in a pick three, pick four, pick fives. Major, major player. Because that guy is definitely got something going on there, man. Let me tell you. So, now we're going to go and see what uh, Race Lens comes up with with their simulation uh, for that race itself. And here we go. Race number nine. That's uh, number 10. Number nine. All right. They see it in the first, in the beginning of the race, the 1 and 11. Didn't I just say the 11 has some uh, talent? Yeah, he does. The 1 is probably your favorite, will be your favorite, probably the horse to beat. But I think it can be beat. It can. And the later uh, middle part of the stage are saying 1 11. I think there's plenty of other speed in there, so I don't know if the 1 has to have that lead. They're saying that the 1 is going to be out there on the lead. They're saying the nine is going to uh, be sitting there third. At the end, they're saying nine, one. Nine slightly has a slight edge of winning at 38%, one at 31%, four at six, five at six, and seven at basically almost six again. I have it one, 11, four, five. I like that 11 a lot. Watch out. This is how uh, we uh, did our. Uh, Factors, probable factors for the win. This is how I set it up. Speed at four, class at four at, at, at Keeneland. Form and distance at five. We go to a jockey and trainer, a jockey trainer. They're both at two. Pace is at four. Remember, I always believe the trainer is worth more points than the jockey. The trainer is there at three. Same thing with the track. Angles back at two. And then the track condition is at three. All right, and then here are what they see as true odds. They have the nine at eight to five, and you got a morning line at eight to one. That's pretty serious, and they got a 38% chance of winning. So take that the way you want to take it. Uh, remember, when you uh, go out and buy this, these odds constantly change, uh, especially after scratches. Uh, they will change the closer you get to post time. And if you can wait to like the five or 10 minute mark, uh, at least five minutes before post, you can see what your true odds are. If you believe in this whole system, which I do, I believe sometimes it does kick out. It'll kick out something that's really worth something, you know, like my 11. It's saying, you know, 70 to one, the morning lions at uh, 30 to one. I don't think we're going to get 70 to one. I'm hoping for 30 to one. I think uh, I think this horse has got a lot more talent than it's it. It's because it's this horse has ran only on on the turf. 
I mean, that's why. Let's just face the facts. That's why they did it. All right. And now let's go to uh, race 10. And we'll see how we handicap that race. There we go. Race 10. All right, this is on turf, one mile stakes. You're going to see these horses, at least the top three, if not the top four, are going to be in uh, Breeders' Cup turf mile, maybe. Uh, so we got uh, some invaders here from Europe. O'Brien uh, has this horse here. I, I, find, I found a couple of videos of this horse. Horse has got some good talent. Um. Uh, has some speed. I just don't know if it has this type of speed here in the United States. Uh, John Stenton is much better at these U European horses than I am when it comes to looking at them and watching them. I uh, did look at the videos. The horse does have serious talent. Um, they're project projecting the 85 and then a 101 and a 110 late pace for this horse. For me, I'm going to have to just take a step back. Uh, I think this horse is a player of some sort. Maybe more on the bottom side of the exotics, but that's about it for me. The two, another one from Europe. I looked and it's another one that has lead and kind of coughs it up a little bit. And they were going seven furlongs there. They're going a mile today. I'm more worried. Can this horse hang on is the question. This horse will probably be out there winging it. And, um, you got to watch out for that. But for me, I'm going to sit back and um, see what happens. First time starter, Dan Foles, 50% or higher in the money. Ooh, that's a nice little stat, huh? Um, first time starter, Dan, win percentage with first time starters. It's pretty high. It is a 4.1, 15% ROI. But the first time starter going long on turf, going, winning turf siblings. Success is 1.2, not too good, but um, those are the stats. But remember, this is all Europe. we got to compare. they got to get used to this. So for me, I'm going to take a step back on this horse. The three. Uh, this horse last time out, going a mile right here in a grade one. Set pretty good in the back of the pack a little bit. Not way too far off. Not too far. About five lengths. Finished pretty good. Not a huge kick, though. That's what concerns me. Not a super huge kick. Did do well. Uh, time before that, much better kick. Came from the clouds. Finished sixth, but it was a very close sixth. I mean, uh, two lengths off the winner. And then the time before that came from the clouds and won. So this horse... Comes from the clouds. It depends what kind of trouble this horse is going to get into. Jose uh, is taking over for his brother. Cherie DeVoe, excellent trainer. She's hot. Let me tell you, uh, even her sister, first time out, her, her she trains about a small barn, but she had her first winner last weekend. Her sister did. So, I mean, they have talent of training. So I'm not too worried about the training aspect of this horse. Uh, race lens angles, horse shipping into track, multiple wins and multiple circuits. That's a great sign. Good protecting the early pace, 72, 75. And look, see how it kicks in at the end, 116. So this horse is coming from behind. Got to get a clear sailing. It's more on Jose than anything. Hopefully this horse doesn't get himself in too much trouble. Is he a major player? Yeah, he's a major player, but I don't know about for the win column. You got to just... It's going to be close on that. I, I, I'm going to say no on the win, but maybe for the exactus or trifectus. The three. Mile 16th, this horse ran very close, so he's a, he's a pressure horse. His horse really sits close. Even the time before that, not too bad. Time before that, even though you see fifth there, he was only a length and three quarters off. Um, this horse sits really close. Mile race. Hmm. I just don't know. Does this horse like Keeneland at turf? Yes, he won here. He's got two wins on Keeneland's turf. Horse has got some talent. Uh, but I think there's better talent 
in this race. If you look at uh, how this the ranking, 93, 98, and a 110 closing. And here is the horse shipping into track multiple circuits. That's always good. And a horse won last race as the favorite. Got to like that, right? But I'm going to sit back and watch on this one. The five. Pressure horse, definitely. Look at this. Every time, up there in front, close to front, up in front, close to front, win. Mile looks ideal for this horse. Look at this. These are all miles, and look at all that, how they finish, how he finishes. Ideal. Candy ride, sire, yeah, blinkers are on today, though. Back when he rode with blinkers, he did just as good as he did without blinkers. So they're putting the blinkers on for a reason. Here's my knock on the horse. What did I tell you about Kentucky Downs? If you race really hard and you finish a length or less, finish second and three quarters of a length. Usually the race right after that is more of a bomb. So I'm going to back off on this horse. I'm going with my stats. I'm going to what has happened in the past too many times for me. Horse does have talent. I'll give him that. But for me, I'm out. I'm not going to do anything with this horse at all. The six. Last time out, finished third and one three quarters in length off the leader at Kentucky Downs. So this, this horse have a shot. Might have a little bit of a shot. I'm more on the exotics for me. I still think that takes a lot out of the, out of the horse. He was the favorite in that race. Um, this horse is sits very close to the pace every time. Matter of fact, that Kentucky Downs was the furthest he's ever been off the pace within his last five races. Um, they're they're calling him an early pace horse. They got him at one hundred two, one hundred, and one hundred seven. So I definitely see him, and I agree with them a little bit that he's going to be one of your pace horses, or one of them that's going to try to go out there in front. Uh, this horse has finished second at Kingland's Turf before. And you got uh, Todd Pletcher, last race favorite. Beaten with success score of 7.7. .7. Uh, this horse is a player. I'm going to put more on the exotics, uh, exotics, exactus, and tries for this horse for me. The eight. Spirit of St. Louis. This is one of, I think, three horses that Chad Brown has in this race. I, this is a, in a very interesting horse, okay? Mile and 16th, this horse wins, sitting very close to the pace, sometimes even mid-pack. Uh, mile and 16th again in a small stakes, wins for fun. Uh, a mile, cuts him back, wins. Uh, was supposed to be on the turf, but he ran in the mud. Now, yeah, it was just that was his test right there. To me, that was his test. Boom, one for fun. Um, then the time after that, it went back on the turf, one again for fun. Then he ran into another uh, race at mile sixteen. Look, he lost by a nose. This horse was going off of what his. Fifth, fifth win, sixth. He was going after his sixth win. This horse knows nothing but win, win, win. This horse has been in the money all 11 times he's raced, either first or second. This horse is 15 to 1. You know why he's 15 to 1? He's moving up in class. He's going up against some of the big boys. Chad Brown usually – he knows his horses. If the horse is ready to go against the big boys, he puts them in. If he thinks he needs to work on things and get things down, he, he starts them slow, builds them up into stakes races. How many small stakes races did he run? Five, actually six, and he finished second in one of them. This horse, he now got this horse to the peak that he knows that this horse is, this is it. He should be able to handle this type of group now. 99, 97, 109. Major player. Major, major player. 15 to 1. Big key. 
Sire and uh, uh, Dan Sire all, all say that he can handle this turf, handle this distance, handle this class. Okay? This horse is major, and you got Luis Saez, uh, Saez up there. Like I said, excellent, excellent rider. The nine, the other Chad Brown horse. There's another one here. Last two times, one for these in graded three, graded one. This is the horse personally to beat. Okay? So if this is the horse to beat, and you look at this on the paper, why did Chad Brown put in the eight horse when he's been moving up? He thinks that eight horse can't compete against this nine. He really believes that. Now, the nine, they're projecting that, that that's when that horse really does his running at the end, big time. You got Tyler Gaffleone aboard. Tyler's rode this horse for a while now. This horse has been seven out of nine in the money. Uh, last couple of times he sat really close to the pace. Definitely a pressure horse or the pace horse. I see this horse sitting second all the way around. Um, I see the eight sitting more like third or fourth, trying to make one run. It's going to be a tough race. I think it's a, between two horses, and I think they're both Chad Brown horses. That's what I think. Now let's see what race lens has projected. Okay, race 10. All right, in the beginning of the race, they see the six, eight, seven, five. They don't say the nine, do they? Uh, I think the nine would be a much a much closer to that. Much, 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 much closer. They have in the middle of the race one, five, six, seven. They still have the eight back. So they're saying the eight might start dropping back. I think the eight is the one that's going to sit about where it is or in the middle of the thing, about fourth, third or fourth, sitting perfect. I see the nine just right there with the eight, maybe just ahead of the eight, maybe. That's how I see it. At the end of the race, they are saying the nine, but barely 29%. They're saying the six. Yeah, who's that six? Talk of the moon. I mean, talk of the nation. Definitely got a lot of talent. Uh, 28%. The two at 19, four at seven, and three at uh, basically five. I like eight, nine is my exacta. That's my, that's my exacta in this race. Let's look at what the odds are here. They have the six at five to two. You have eight to one morning line right now. So that's supposed to be the uh, true odds that you should be betting. All right. Uh, give me a second here. All right. And so here's my um, how I'm going to play this card. Pick six starts in the sixth race. And in the sixth race, I do like six, eight, four, ten. I'm going to do a try with the 6-8 on top, 6-8 in the second and third spot with the 4-10-5, and the 4-10-5 in that third spot. Now, my pick five, I'm going 6-8-4, those first three. In the second leg, which is the seventh race, I'm going 3-1-2-6 in that order. In the eighth race, which is the third leg of this pick five, I'm going 11-4-8. Okay. In that fraternity, the two-year-old race, remember I said the one's the favorite, the one's the one to beat, but I do like the 11, the big, huge, long shot, probably a 30 to 1. I'm going 1, 11, 4, 5, 6. I think why I'm taking the one in there, even though he's the favorite, I don't think he's going to be a super huge favorite. I think 8 to 5 he might be at, but I, there's going to be plenty of money out there, and if we need one of these other four horses – Happen to knock him off on the top spot. That's going to make that pick five really nice and juicy. Uh, I do think his number one competition is that 11. 
So in that uh, fourth leg, I'm going 111, 4, 5, 6. And then my final leg, the, the fifth leg, which is the 10th race we just went over, I'm going the 8, 9. Just like that. So I'm going to I'm going to get some prices there. Um, this this pick five. If I hit this pick five, this one will pay pretty decent, people. If I hit this one, because there's some prices in there. Even if the favorite wins in a, three of these legs of the five, matter of fact, two of the legs or three of the legs of the five, the favorite's not going to be a huge favorite. Two to one type of favorite. That'd be three to one, something like that. So in the uh, seventh race, I do like the three, one, two, six. I'm going to try box just all four of them. I'm not playing around on that one. The eighth race, I like the 11, four, eight, two. I'm going 11 exacta on top over the four, eight. And then in the ninth race, like I told you, I think it's super wide open. One, 11, four, five is my top four picks. I'm going to try with 111. Of course, they drop in the second and third spot also with the 456. And in that third spot, I'm going 456 and 9. Remember, the 9 was the one that had true odds of 8 to 5, and morning line is 8 to 1. Um, exact the box, um, I'm going 111. Just box it. And in that 10th race, I'm going for it. I know. I know. I'm crazy. I get it. This horse is a, a decent price, 15 to 1. I'm hoping and saying that, that hopefully he stays around that. I'm actually thinking he's going to drop down to 8, 9 to 1. Um, I'm putting a 50 drop on win and place on this horse on the 8. I'm going exactly the 8. I'm going for it. I'm going 8 on top of the 9 and 3. I'm doing a trifecta. I'm doing all, three, all four box. Try to save myself a little bit there if I have to. Uh, so that's how I see it in that um, in those races. And let's go out there and uh, get that pick five at Keeneland. And remember at Keeneland, um, it looks like the weather is going to be really nice out there. I checked the weather; it should be in probably the high seventies. It should be a really nice day out there. So look out for that. So turf's going to be fine. The dirt's going to be fine. Uh, if you ever get a chance to come out, go out to Keeneland. I'm um, going to be out there most likely on Saturday and myself at the track. Uh, I'm going to go out there and uh, check it all out. So other than that, I'm going to say see you later. And uh, until next weekend, I'll, we'll just go catch those winners, right? See ya. Tracking trips at past the wire, no matter what your level of play is. You know, people play the horses for all types of reasons. The action, the excitement, the thrill, the challenge. Some, believe it or not, even play expecting to lose. Me, I don't have that problem. I play to win and take down scores and have been doing it successfully for a long time. This is the life I've chosen. Don't go into battle alone. I do that. And you can have me and tracking trips as your second set of eyes. You can be a better better. Let's win this fight. Patience, discipline, like a cobra, ready to strike at the right time. When we win, we celebrate, and we celebrate hard because the rewards make all of it work nobody does it better tracking trips have passed the wire be a member unless of course you hate money